Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Eddie. Today we have the Bamboo Labs P1S and we're gonna see if this is a printer that you should buy. All right guys, so I picked this P1S up just a couple days ago and about two weeks ago, I got myself a Bamboo Lab A1, the standard one, not the mini. And I wanted to see how well this stacks up between the A1 and the P1S. So I wanted this video to appeal to two types of people. One being your new to 3D printing like myself. Um, I got into it two weeks ago and Bamboo Lab is the best way to go for somebody that's new with 3D printing. It's more of like the Apple of the 3D printers. So once you buy it, unbox it, which takes about 25 minutes, unbox it, you set it on your desk, you get everything turned on and you just forget. You just go and load up a print and press print and it just, it prints right out the box. The first thing I wanted to clarify, obviously, this has a 256 by 256 by 256 millimeter bed size, just like the A1. However, the A1 mini has a smaller one, which I, in my opinion, believe you should just skip entirely unless you're going to use it 1% of the time or you're going to use it for something very specific that's for smaller bed sizes like toys or you know whatever but i i still think man i'm running out of space on this thing so the price difference being uh about 200 dollars for the combo models at least they are both combos uh one has slightly different ams than the other one is ams light one is a standard ams one of the main differences in the standard ams is that the the it's an enclosed filament holder so it actually tries to keep the moisture out in order to prevent, you know, uh, like print quality decreasing. And I don't really know all the technical stuff because I'm still new to this. But from what I understand, the AMS light is just an exposed AMS system, while the standard AMS has uh, has desiccants and all that stuff to keep the cabin dry. The standard AMS, you can check the humidity level from the Bamboo Handy app, which is really cool. Now, from what I understand researching these two printers, the A1 and the P1S is they print the same stuff um, with nearly the same print quality, the P1S being slightly higher and uh, using the same filaments. So now moving on from the AMS, uh, one of the biggest differences that just threw me in the eye was the screen. The screen was noticeably smaller and harder to work with on the P P1S versus the A1. The A1 had like a really nice big touch screen that had your 3D models all on there. It was more like an iPhone just using apps. So you can just navigate through the menu really easily. You needed to load filaments. You can just do that really easily from there. I found myself using the screen on the A1 a lot. But once I moved on to the P1S, I just did everything from the app. Everything is possible from the app. You can load filaments. You can check your cabin level for uh, for humidity. You can start prints. You can pause prints. You can cancel prints. You can... You can do literally everything from the app that you would on that touchscreen. Um, so I'd say it's definitely not a not something to consider like thinking about, hey, like that screen is just a plus. I wouldn't even consider it a plus on the A1, although it's very nice. So moving on from the screen, uh, obviously, as you can tell, the there's a big box around the P1S. This box, this enclosure is a plastic type of material unlike in the X1 Carbon being, I believe, stainless steel or aluminum, something like that. The fact that it has an enclosure is a really good thing because it keeps the it keeps the temperature levels in there like at a monitored level. It can cool itself down or it can, you know, obviously keep the heat and whatever. Also keeping humidity out. So now really the biggest difference with these two printers is not an enclosure because you can always get an enclosure for an A1. Uh, it's not the filament types. It's not even the AMSs, although they are different. It's actually the beds. So the P1S is a XYZ printer, whereas the A1 is a they, what they call a bed slinger. So where, where I found this to be potentially unreliable, I've been reading on Reddit and stuff and seeing people have issues with layer lines. I slightly had that issue with my A1. Um, I'm sure it's tinkerable. You can kind of work with it, especially if you slow your print, prints down. Now moving on from the beds, uh, because the other one was a bed slinger and this one's an XYZ printer, 
The print times are reported like 10 to 15% faster on the P1S. And last and not least, I wanted to go over the worst topic that some people won't like about the P1S. Now it's noticeably louder, um, specifically because of the AMS. Is the AMS is very loud. When it when it turns on, it sounds more like a motor running. You can hear the motor from across the room. In a different room, you can hear. You know what I'm saying? It's like loading the the filament. Whereas the A1 didn't have motors in the AMS. They were just spools that would just kind of roll. Uh, so the A A1 was much quieter in terms of AMS, and I would also argue the printing itself was a little bit uh, quieter on the A1. If you're going to have a, a printer inside of your room, definitely go with the A1. If you're not going to have a printer inside of your room, go with the P1S probably. And if you're also willing to get that extra value and you're going to keep something long term, long term, you don't want to end up upgrading. Inside. All right, guys. So to wrap up the video, I want you guys to comment below on which printer you want, went with or which one that you want to buy. And maybe name your reasons on why you purchased that printer or why you want to get one of those. Um, and also, please recommend some upgrades for this thing because I got this thing pooping bricks in the back. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be posting soon. Ciao.